you? No, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with the shoe. What? The other shoe? I had that tied really tight a minute ago. Who did that? A what? A bird? You're not supposed to be birds out yet. Where? Yes, hole? I'll get him. He's not supposed to be out here. Now my shoe's tied. I tied it, remember? The other one. The other one? Now I know that one was tied. Now how did that one happen? It came out of that hole? You said that one. Make up your mind. No, there's nothing in there. I think you've been out in the sun too long. A carrot? This is a bird show, not a vegetable show. What? What, behind me? There's nothing behind me. You're loony. So you had to kick me side there or something. Turn around. Turn, oh, turn around. OK. That just made me dizzy. I kind of liked it, but it made me dizzy all the same. What? In the hole? This hole? He went in the hole? Turn around and made me kind of goofy. This hole? Back there? He went in there? Yeah. I reached all the way around. I didn't feel nothing. I didn't feel a feather or anything. You know what, though? It's impossible for the birds to be out right now. You know why? because the trainers have to let the birds out, right? Well, the trainers, they're all sitting backstage in these big lazy boy chairs in the air conditioning and watching cable TV, so. <laughs> but uh, before the trainers get out here, you guys want to see a bird trick I taught the birds? Yeah. 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 Woo! All right. OK, but uh, if I bring these birds out, you guys got to promise. Can't tell Gary, the bird trainer, okay? Because he doesn't really like me touching his birds, you know, and I've been kind of sneaking them out around midnight trying to teach him this trick. So if I bring him out, you guys got to... Okay? Okay, I'm going to go get him. You're going to love him. Oh, 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 Don't go nowhere. <laughs> These are really, really expensive birds. Been working with them all summer. Oh, almost forgot got my own soundtrack, hooked it up to this remote control. I love remotes, never want to put them down. I got three birds. I'm gonna run over there, they're gonna land in my arm. One, two, three, you're gonna love it. Woo! You guys ready? Come on, let's do it. One, two, three, ha! Now please join me in welcoming the bird trainers of the Cincinnati Zoo. 
you might notice him perched up there on the side. Let's see if I can't call him down here for a nice quick reward. Also, let's go. One big step, open up the wings, you can do it. I'm right down here, Oslo. He's looking at something else. <laughs> Let's go, Oslo. Come on. Let's try my calling for a minute. And that didn't work either. <laughs> Come on. 20 minute show. <laughs> now it's a 25 minute show. <laughs> Here he comes. Whoa, whoa, hang on, Okay. We've got a bit of a delay here for the owl. <laughs> okay, Oslo, come on. Okay, I'm just going to have to wait him out here. I don't want to get him flying somewhere he doesn't supposed to go. Oslo, let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on, let's go. Here he comes, finally. most people notice about owls are their large eyes. They have these large eyes for a good reason. Helps them to see better in the darkness. However, the eyes do take up two-thirds the size of a skull. Doesn't leave a whole lot of room for a brain. That adage about the wise old owl, it's not true at all. That's okay though. Owls don't have to be very intelligent to hunt. They're equipped with something very special and unique, and that's called silent flight. They have uniquely softened edges on their feathers making an owl in flight completely silent. So they catch your prey by surprise. They definitely don't outsmart it. <laughs> and uh, he's been doing this routine for three years. He still hasn't figured it out. <laughs> I guess a lot of you might have noticed he looks a lot like a great horned owl. That's because these two birds are very closely related. All owls are what we call general feeders, which means they prey on just about anything that moves. They prey on insects, lizards, snakes, frogs, fish, other birds, Mice, moles, bulls, shrews. You smell something, there's an odd odor around here. Squirrels, raccoons. That's right, guys. Uh, thanks for reminding me back there. Yeah, the owl is the only natural predator of the skunk. Probably has to do with the fact that an owl doesn't have a sense of smell. And, uh, speaking of smell, are you guys all right back there? A lot of commotion. Okay, great. <laughs> well, we just showed you a hawk and an owl. The way they catch their prey is pretty conventional. They grab it with their strong, powerful feet. But you know, some birds are a little more bizarre sit, than the way they sit. go in their prey. Good boy. Good boy. Now roll over. Speaking roll of over. bizarre, Mike, what are you doing out here? Gary, I thought maybe you could put my lizard Lucky in your show. Lizard Lucky? Mike, this is a bird show. You had a skunk in the bird show. We did? Yeah. <laughs> maybe we can use that lizard, Mike. Cool. Because the next bird we're bringing out feeds on lizards and snakes. He comes all the way from South America. His name's Chico. He's our red-legged Sariyama. There he is. Buenos dias, Chico. Uh, basically what Sariyamas do down there in South America, Mike, is they walk around on those large, powerful legs of theirs. Oh, uh, like these legs. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they search for lizards and snakes. And when they do them in, it's very unusual. So why don't you put Lucky down there on the stage? Chico, I'll show you how he hunts. Will it hurt? Won't hurt me a bit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here you go, Chico. Play nice. Place a good egg. They pick the lizard up Don't. on the tail, and then they slam it on the ground <laughs> until the lizard's not completely senseless, and then they swallow him whole. It's very unusual. Oh, the humanity <laughs> of parental guidance is advised. Close the eyes of the small children. Man, he's oh. oh, I bet he's got a headache this big. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I've heard a slam dance in Gary, but that's just ridiculous. Okay, Chico, good job. Oh. Oh. Making sure his cranium's jello. He must have been talking to the owl. Oh. Lucky will never pass the SATs now. Oh. Okay, Chico, you're oh. done. Thank you. Okay. Lucky needs some Gatorade. Like to do is to mimic 
Mimicking is merely imitating sounds that they hear often and sounds that they like to say. Two of the finest mimicking or talking birds in the world is the African gray and yellow-naked Amazon parrots. We're grown two parrots here today. Their names are Mort, our African gray parrot, and Coco, she's our yellow-naked Amazon parrot. Let's start off with Mort. Mort, why don't you tell everyone out there your name, okay? What's your name? Mort. Your name? Mort. Mort, okay. Coco, your turn. Why don't you say hi, Coco? Hi, Coco. Hi, Coco. Hi, Coco. Hi, Coco. Hi, girl. <laughs> you know, we've been trying to get these two birds together for quite some time. Now, Coco, why don't you break the ice and tell Mort hello? Just a nice hello. Hello. Hi, girl. Okay, Mort, it's your turn. Why don't you throw Coco a kiss? You think that's easy? Remember, he has a guy on the lips. <laughs> hey, Bort, what do you think of Coco over there? She's like, that's not very polite wolf whistling at Coco like that. You know what kind of bird you are? You're a what? Bad bird. You're a bad bird, that's right. Coco, you agree with that? Bad bird. a bad bird, that's right. You know what we do to bad birds, Coco? We bop them on the head, don't we? Like this. Hit him over the head. All I do is put my hand over his head, and that's his cue to make this noise. Mort, one more time. Coco, I want you to pay attention here. Mort's going to whistle a little tune for you right now. You know he's always wanted to be a pop star. Mort, what kind of star are you? Mort. Mort's a what? What kind of star are you? What kind of star are you? Mort's a pop star. Mort's a pop star. That's right. Okay, let's whistle a little tune for Coco. I'll direct you with my finger. You just follow along. Ready? Here we go. Somebody else thought it was a flying saucer going over her. <laughs> <Bye>, real quick. <laughs> of course, Coco's favorite time down at the ballpark is the seventh inning. You know that seventh inning stretch? That's when everybody stands up and sings their favorite baseball song. Favorite baseball song. What is going on? It's a cloud going through the sun, okay? <laughs> What's the favorite baseball song, Coco? What? You what? You want a beer? <laughs> people's favorite song. They also sing a baseball song. You ready? Here we go, Coco. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ball game. Coco are yelling at Amazon with some mimicking behavior. Thanks, Coco. Okay, for the next part of the show, we're going to be flying a hawk out to different points over the top of the amphitheater. Once again, we'd like to remind everyone, please be sure to duck. Duck, duck. I definitely heard duck. I thought I heard my introduction. Uh, okay, the hawk's going to be appearing out of this hole right over here, flying out over your heads. I'd like to remind everyone as she's flying over your head and you look up, please keep your mouth shut. Okay, here she comes. Her name's Tucson. She's our other Harris hawk. I like to fly Harris hawks in the bird show because they are one of the more intelligent of all birds of prey. They're one of the few birds of prey that actually hunt in a family group. Much like a pack of wolves would hunt, one bird flushing up prey for the other birds to catch. Now, favorite prey item of the Harris hawk is the desert quail. We're going to demonstrate that social hunting behavior today with Tucson. We're going to pretend I'm another Harris hawk flushing up a quail for her to catch in midair, just like that. Nice catch, Tucson. What a girl. The uh, part of the quail was played by part of a mouse. <laughs> just in case you're wondering. Okay. Mm, makes me hungry just thinking about it. Huh? You know, when you look at birds like that, hawk and owls and animals such as snakes are very important to you and I because a large part of their diet consists of rodents. Without these predators to control the rodents, a lot wait, of... Wait, 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 wait. Were you talking about hawks, owls, snakes, and wow, rodents? I sure was, Mike. You know what? Rodents are just about everywhere, Mike. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, they are. As a matter of fact, Mike, animals like the Norway rat, they travel around the globe from Europe, Billy, to climb up a rope, get on a sailing ship. The sailing ships went all over the world, 
Pretty soon the Norway rat was found everywhere, Mike. Wow. Just from there, boy, to climb on the ropes. Kind of like these ropes right here, Mike. Like these ropes around the amphitheater? Yeah, all right. They climbed up one of the boats. That's amazing, Grace. I didn't know that about the ropes and the boats and the rats going on. Wait a minute. Rats on boats. Wouldn't that make them pirates? So Gary, Gary, Gary. Yeah. What's the big deal about a few rats anyway? What's the big deal about a few rats? Let me tell you, Mike, you know, if we took one pair of rats. Oh, that would be two rats. We turned them loose in a cornfield, took away all the hawks, owls, and snakes to control them. Uh -huh. In one year's time, that one pair of rats could reproduce into a million rats. In that a million rats? Rats all over. Ah! Mike, Mike, are, are you okay? Oh, I don't.
It's great speed to chase its prey down and to grab its prey right out of midair. We're going to demonstrate that uh, hunting style today. Gary is. And rather than using live prey, Gary's going to be using a leather lure with a piece of meat attached to it. Aladdin is located here on the hillside to the right. Watch closely as this happens rather quickly. Here he comes. Now, air falcons are native to North Africa and the Mediterranean, and they may clock in their dives in the wild at speeds of up to 160 miles an hour. Now, even though he only weighs about a pound, he can knock a bird out of the air that weighs two to three times his weight. The reason being, one pound going 160 miles an hour can do a lot of damage. Watch how he makes this tight turn. All right, here he comes for the, for the strike. He makes the strike, turns around, and comes back for his reward. All right, that's Gary and Lev from Rander Coffin. Nice job of crying, guys. Good job. All right, that's going to be a tough act to follow. Oh, wait, hold it, bitch, hold it, bitch, hold it, bitch. Wait, 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 wait. That's not what? a tough act to follow. What? Okay. You were impressed with that. I thought it was pretty neat. Yeah. What's this death defying act I've been working on? Okay, death defying act.
of you would like to get a closer look at some of the birds, we'll have a few of them down here at the front edge of the stage for about five minutes after the show. So come on down.